What's up guys, Ben Azadi here, functional health practitioner. Now, you wanna go keto, but what's holding you back is you think you're gonna to have to give up all your precious fruit. I'm here to tell you, you can have your keto cake and you can eat it too. There are five specific fruits that you can have on the keto diet all the time, and you could still be in ketosis, you can still get the wonderful benefits of fat burning and down regulation of inflammation. I'm gonna share those five fruits with you I'm also gonna give you the top fruits to stay away from. These are the ones that get you out of ketosis, that cause harm to your liver, that causes you to store um, too much body fat, things that you don't want. I'm gonna give you that list at the end as well. So here's a little guideline of what I'm gonna to present to you today on this wonderful topic of keto-approved fruits. I'm gonna give you my number one go-to fruit. This is keto-approved. It's loaded with antioxidants. It tastes delicious, nature's candy and it doesn't knock you out of ketosis. I'm gonna talk about the worst fruits on keto. These are the ones you wanna avoid or limit as much as possible. The best time to have your carbs when you are doing keto, and then a simple hack for balancing your blood sugar. This hack is a game changer, especially for anybody who is diabetic or type two diabetic, or anybody who has that in their family history and is worried about getting type two diabetes. This is gonna be a game-changing hack for you. It's actually two hacks that you can do that help manage blood sugar. So let's get right into it. Some things to consider, I'm calling these keto considerations. Uh, always buy organic when you're buying these fruit. Organic is better, you don't want pesticides-laden fruit that opens up your tight junctions and cause leaky gut and increases your chance of cancer. You don't want that. Get organic as much as possible, get um, fruit, I'm talking about the actual whole fruit here. I'm not talking about the juice of the fruit, okay? Because when you're drinking fruit juice, like grapefruit juice or pomegranate juice or orange juice, it's pretty much just sugar water. It's stripping away all the fiber and it's jacking up your blood sugar and it's knocking you out of ketosis. So I'm actually talking about the whole fruit here. And then buy local as much as possible. Go to your local farmer's market, get local, support local, that's what it's about. So let's get into number one. This is at, number one is actually my favorite on the list and it's my go-to fruit when I'm in keto and when I'm not in keto because I, I, I flex. That's gonna be berries, okay? And I'm putting all the berries in one category and that's gonna be blueberries. That's my number one, by the way. Raspberries, blackberries, and cranberries. I love berries. They have a low glycemic load and they're low in sugar. They're low in fructose. They're high in antioxidants and polyphenols. And here's a little hack for you. When you're eating blueberries, buy them organic, as I mentioned, get them wild, and then put them in the freezer or buy them frozen. Eat them frozen, you actually get more benefits. The anthocyanine in it, which is a antioxidant that turns it blue and uh, purplish, that's loaded with polyphenols, anti-inflammatory polyphenols. And the ice crystals that form on that blueberry, when you eat the blueberry frozen, it bypasses a certain part of your digestive system and you absorb more of those antioxidants. So eat frozen blueberries. I always tell my students, half a cup a day. It's a great dessert, nature's candy. I love it. Raspberries are also great because they decrease appetite and they increase satiety, right? They help you, they satisfy your sugar tooth, your sweet tooth. If there's somebody who gets sugar cravings, raspberries are great go-to choice. I also like dark chocolate. I know it's not a fruit. And if you're somebody who's struggling with sugar cravings, I got a cool little hack for you. The same part of your brain that lights up when you're craving sugar is the same part of your brain that lights up for somebody who wants cocaine. I know, it's crazy. That's why sugar is so addicting because the same part of your brain lights up. There's a supplement called L-glutamine. L-glutamine has been known and proven to suppress that part of your brain that gets stimulated with sugar cravings. So it calms down that part of your brain and your cravings go away. Throw that into the mix if you're somebody who struggles with cravings. Also have some raspberries to satiate yourself. Strawberries are also great because it has adiponectin and it has leptin. These are, actually I should say, it boosts adiponectin and it boosts leptin, which are two fat burning hormones we have in the human body. So yes, yeah, strawberries could help with fat burning. Berries are my favorite. Get them, eat them, let them be your dessert. They're okay. They're great actually on the keto diet. Number two on my list, 
pomegranate. I love pomegranate. I'm not talking about the juice here. I'm talking about the actual little seeds. 12 grams of sugar in half a cup of those seeds. That's okay. It's about moderate. It's not high, but it's loaded in phytonutrients that increase the size of beta cells in the pancreas that make insulin. What the heck does that mean? Look, if you're somebody who struggles with uh, blood sugar imbalances, if you are pre-diabetic, which by the way, 60, 60 percent of Americans are either diabetic or pre-diabetic. So you might be diabetic, or I should say you might be pre-diabetic and you don't know it yet. When you're pre-diabetic, you want to make sure you're taking care of your pancreas, which produces insulin. The beta cells are what produce insulin. Now, when you eat pomegranate, it's high in these phytonutrients and it helps the in in increase the size of these beta cells, which it helps stimulate healthy insulin levels. So this is very important for somebody who has type two diabetes or pre-diabetic. Something else is that it helps the brain, the heart, and it reduces your cancer risk because it's loaded with antioxidants. Freeze them, here's a little hack for you, freeze the seeds of the pomegranate and have them for like a little treat, maybe a dessert treat. I don't have another bonus tip that's on here. It actually helps boost testosterone. It helps with blood flow and circulation. So if you're a guy and you wanna get a little increase in blood flow and, and the testosterone, hey, pomegranate, it's where it's at. Next on my list, avocados. Yeah, technically avocado is a fruit although it's loaded with healthy fat, high source of healthy fat in avocados. This helps slow down the breakdown of carbohydrates. What does that mean? That means you don't get that spike of glucose, meaning it's not gonna kick you out of ketosis. You're gonna get stable glucose because of the healthy fat found in the avocado. It has two times more potassium than bananas. Did you know that? Potassium is very important, especially when you're going keto, because when you go keto, as you burn your sugar reserves, your body releases a lot of electrolytes with it. Potassium is the number one most important electrolyte, and we require 4,700, 4,700 milligrams of potassium per day. That's the requirement. Most people are not getting that. So you know what happens when we, when we don't get that and we're releasing all of our sugar reserves and we're dumping out electrolytes when we've gone keto? We feel like crap. We get the keto flu. We get brain fog and we don't feel great. That's why people struggle on the keto diet. So it's important to get your potassium and you could get it from avocados. One cup of, of, of avocados has 800 milligrams of potassium. Green leafy vegetables have are loaded with them. So add that to the mix and you'll hit your requirement. It's also high in vitamin C, vitamin K, vitamin E. It has high amounts of B5. This is an important vitamin for your adrenal glands. If you're somebody who struggles with energy levels or recovery from exercise, the adrenals help with that. And the B5 found in the, vit in the avocado helps you produce healthy cortisol levels and it helps your adrenals out. It's also loaded with phytosterols, which is a type of fat which that fights inflammation, okay? So if you have a lot of inflammation, avocados bring down inflammation. Inflammation is the number one cause of all disease. Every disease is linked to inflammation. Avocados brings down inflammation. Do you see the connection here, how important it is? Uh, here's a little hack for you. When you're eating your avocados, I like a Haas avocado, eat about one per day on the keto diet is totally fine. Peel the skin off with your fingers, with your hands, because a lot of the nutrients found in the avocado is right behind that peel. So if you're scooping it out with a spoon, it's hard to get all of that. So just peel it off with your, with your fingers and then eat the avocado. You're gonna get a lot of those nutrients. Next on the list is grapefruit. I love grapefruit and I'm gonna show you why. It's been shown to regulate cholesterol, balance out your cholesterol levels. It contains a specialized antioxidant called naringenin, right? This helps improve insulin sensitivity. It also helps the liver burn fat instead of storing fat. Yes, so grapefruit does help you burn fat. It helps the liver out. A study showed grapefruit also lowered blood sugar just as well as metformin. Metformin is a prescription drug medicine given to type two diabetics to lower blood sugar. This study showed grapefruit did just as well as that metformin prescription drug. I'm gonna put the study in the notes below and you can read it yourself. Grapefruit is powerful. If you are type two diabetic or know somebody who is type two diabetic, it's important for them to have some of these grapefruit, have some of the pomegranate. It's gonna be a game changer for their health. Boom, boom, boom. Coconut, baby. 
Yeah, coconut is a fruit. It's a fatty fruit. 60% of coconut is MCT. What the heck is MCT? That stands for medium chain triglycerides. This is very important because MCT is quickly used for energy because it bypasses your liver and it quickly goes into your bloodstream and then it's absorbed into your cells and it produces mitochondria, ATP, which is energy. So that's just a fancy way of saying MCT oil helps you produce energy quickly and it helps you produce ketones quickly. So if you want to actually double your ketones, you could do that with MCT oil, right? Because we have our cells, we're made up of trillions of cells and we have in our cells something called ATP, right? ATP is where we produce energy. This is life right here. Without ATP, we would not exist. So when you take MCT oil from coconuts, it goes into your cells very rapidly and it helps produce this ATP, which gives you energy, right? Think of the mitochondria as the power plant that produces energy, energy, which is called ATP. So MCT, and it sounds like I'm rhyming here, all of this helps the production and helps you feel good and it helps you produce ketones is what I'm trying to say. It also helps you achieve ketosis faster. I just mentioned that. It contains, coconut oil contains something in it called lauric acid. Now lauric acid is a very powerful antiviral, antimicrobial, it helps fight bacteria. So if you have a virus, if you have a cold or a bug, if you have H. pylori, if you have some, something going on, coconut oil is a very powerful antidote to that. The last thing on here is that it helps increase HDL, which is the good cholesterol, high density lipoprotein, and it also helps increase large particle LDL. So I know you've heard about LDL, or I imagine you heard about it, and you think it's the bad guy. It's not so fast. There's LDL split up into two parts. You have the large and fluffy LDL cholesterol, which is the good type of cholesterol. Then half of it, you have the other half, you have the small and sticky particle. That's the bad stuff. Now, coconut oil raises the good large LDL, okay? So when you see studies that show coconut oil is bad for you and it's gonna make your heart explode because it raises LDL, that's not necessarily a bad thing because half of LDL could be the good, large, and fluffy. You gotta look at which particles they're looking at here. So that's number five on the list. Here are my least favorite keto fruits, or even if you're not keto, these are my least favorite fruits because they have a lot of sugar, they have a lot of fructose. Bananas, grapes, pineapples, apples, dried fruits, because that messes with digestion, by the way. Mangoes and pears. These are the ones I would avoid or I would limit as much as possible. That'll knock you out of ketosis. That'll stimulate blood sugar levels. Keep in mind that all fruit has fructose. These have more fructose. Fructose is only metabolized by the liver. Your liver, your three pound liver, which is the soccer mom of all organs. It does everything and anything at all times. Most people have a sluggish liver. They have a fatty liver, even if it's a non-alcoholic fatty liver, it's so common because they're eating so much fructose from even fruit, from fruit juices the worst, and from sodas. Only your liver can metabolize that, as opposed to something called glucose. Every cell in your body could produce, or I should say process glucose, but only your liver could process fructose. These are gonna strain your liver, especially if you're drinking this in the form of like a smoothie or a juice, you're gonna tax your liver. And guess what? Your liver helps the conversion of thyroid hormone. We've all heard of thyroid hormone, right? Thyroid hormone is a master metabolism hormone, fat burning hormone. It's very important for energy levels. Every cell has a receptor site for the thyroid hormone. Now there is a T4, which is the inactive form of thyroid. It needs to be converted to T3 so your cells could use it because it has these receptor sites that use that signal. Now, you know what makes that conversion? What helps with that conversion? Insulin and your liver. Your liver makes that conversion. So somebody who has a fatty liver, they're gonna wreck their thyroid and it's not gonna be good. Hypothyroidism is rampant amongst the US population. So the liver is super important. These are not good for the liver, especially in smoothie and juice form. So I would, I would stay away from that. I, want, I would eat the other ones that I recommended. Here's a bonus tip for you. This is very important. This is important for everybody, whether you are diabetic or not. If you are somebody who wants to balance your blood sugar, this is very important because keep in mind that every time you spike your blood sugar, you're aging yourself. Think of that apple you bite into and it turns brown. You're doing that every time you spike blood sugar. So what if we could maintain, or I should say manage 
the effect of that spike. We would live a longer life. Number one is perform 50 squats before you have your carbohydrates, whether it's fruit or other sources of carbs. When you perform 50 squats, you could even sit down on a chair and just stand up 50 times, and then you have those carbs, you activate something called the GLUT4 transporter. And what that does essentially is it takes the insulin and the carbs and the glucose from that food you're gonna eat and it shuttles it for energy into your muscle cells as opposed to shuttling it, in, shuttling it into your liver and your body fat. So it's a cool little hack. We like the GLUT4 transporter, it's your friend. The next thing is that have most of your carbs later in the day because at this point, your glycogen stores, which is your sugar reserves, they're gonna become depleted and depleted and depleted. So when you have your carbs later in the day, you're just gonna replenish that instead of storing it as body fat. If your glycogen stores were already topped off, then you're having your carbs on top of that, it's gonna be stored as body fat. Last tip here, I read a study this morning that showed a 22% decrease in blood sugar going for a 10 minute walk after eating a large meal. It was shown in type two diabetics and I imagine it could have a similar effect for anybody, whether you are type two diabetic or not. So after you have a high carb meal or any carbs for that matter, go for a 10 to 20 minute walk. It's gonna help regulate your blood sugar and you're gonna have more long-term sustainable energy. Look, if you wanna learn more about the ketogenic diet, I wrote the beginner's guide to the ketogenic diet. It's called Keto Kickstart Guide. If you go to ketokickstartguide.com, you're gonna learn my four pillar approach to achieving the maximum results in the ketogenic diet. Number one is to become adapted, fat adapted. Number two, begin some intermittent fasting. I teach all about that. Number three, go into a period of time where you're forcing yourselves to choose fat for fuel. It's called the phase pillar. And then number four, you have the flexibility to go in and out of ketosis, which is what I personally do, and it's what I personally teach. You see, I don't believe we, could, we should stay in ketosis too long. I think we should be we should use fat as our primary fuel source most of the time, but I also think it's healthy to get out of ketosis the same way our ancestors got out of ketosis. So if you wanna get that guide, you could get it for free. Go to ketokickstartguide.com and you could get it for free. Thank you so much for watching this video. Subscribe to my channel. Have a healthy day.